Shalom, he rose and she rose. Welcome to the channel. I am Wolfield Disciple. And today's daily reading will be 1 Samuel chapter 25 and Acts chapter 19. And so to keep this video short, let's get with it. If you are not subscribed to the channel and you like some of the content that you read or, or that you watch, go click the subscribe button, please, and the little bell so you get notifications when I do a video. Please comment any comments, and we'll be glad to get back with you. Let's see where David's at. Samuel and Saul. David had just met up with Saul the last time we we read, and um, King David had a chance to kill, or future King David had a chance to kill um, King Saul, but due to the anointing of Yahweh. Um, David just let him know that I could have had you right here, right now. And so if you are just listening and watching out in the pasture, we got some buffalo out there. If not, get your Bible and follow along with us. 1 Samuel 25, verse 1. And Samuel died, and all Israel gathered, and mourned for him, and buried him at his home in Ramah. And Dawid rose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Now there was a man in Maon, and his work was in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he came to be shearing his sheep in Carmel. And the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful, but the man was hard and evil in his doings. And he was of Caleb. And Dawid heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. And Dawid sent ten young men. And Dawid said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, and you shall come to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And say this, Long life and peace to you, and peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. And now I have heard that you have shearers. Now your shepherds have been with us. We did not put them to shame. And not, and not a speck of theirs was missing all the days they were in Carmel. Ask your young men and let them inform you. So let my young men find favor in your eyes. For we come on a good day. Please give whatever comes to your hand, to your servants, and to your son, Dawid. And the young men of Dawid came and spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of Dawid and waited. But Nabal answered the servants of Dawid and said, Who is Dawid, and who is this son of Yesi? And the servants who are running away from their masters have become many nowadays. And shall I take my bread and my water and my meat that I have slaughtered for my shears and give it to, to men coming from who knows where? And the young man of Dawid turned around on their way and went back and came and reported to him all these words. And Dawid said to his men, Each one gird on his sword. So they each girded on his sword, and Dawid also girded on his sword. And about 400 men went with Dawid, and 200 remained with baggage. And one of the young men informed Abigail, the wife of Nabal, saying, See, Dawid has sent his, his messengers from the wilderness to greet our master. But he scoffed at them. But the men were very good to us and did not put us to shame nor did we miss any item all the days we accompanied them when we were in the fields they were a wall to us both by night and day all the days we were with them tending sheep and now know and see what should what you should do for the evil has been resolved against our master and against all his household and he is too much of a son of a Belial to speak to. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two skins of wine and five sheep made ready, five measures of roasted grain and 100 clusters of raisins, 200 cakes of figs and loaded them on donkeys. And she said to her servants, pass over before me. See, I'm coming after you. But she did not inform her husband, Nabal. And it came to be as she rode on the donkey, as she went down under cover of the hill, and 
there were Dawid and his men coming down toward her, and she met them. And Dawid had said, Only in vain have I protected all that is that this one has in the wilderness, so that not a speck was missing of all that belongs to him, and he has repaid me evil for good. Let, o, let Elohim do so, and more also to the enemies of Dawid. If I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light, David fixing lay ways to do. And Abigail saw David, and she hastened to come down from the donkey and fell on her face before David and bowed to the ground and fell at his feet and said, On me, my master, let this crookedness be on me. And please let your female servant speak in your ears and hear the words of your female servant. <clears throat> please let not my master regard this man of Belial novel. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your female servant, did not see the young man of my master whom you sent. <coughs> and now, my master, as Yahweh lives, as your being lives, since Yahweh And now, my master, as Yahweh lives and your being lives, since Yahweh has withheld from you coming to bloodshed from avenging yourself with your own hand. Now, let your enemies be as Nabal, even though seeking evil against my master. And now this present, which your female servant has brought to my master, let it be given to the young men who follow my master. Please forgive the transgression of your female servant. For Yahweh is certainly making a steadfast, steadfast house for my master. Because my master fights the battles of Yahweh, and evil is not found in you in all your days. She's puffing, puffing David up. She's, she's laying it on the line. It's, it's all she's got to do. <laughs> and if a man rises to pursue you and seek your life, and the life of my master has been bound in the bundle of the living with Yahweh your Elohim, then the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the pocket of a sling. And it shall be when Yahweh has done for my master according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has commanded you to be ruler over Israel. Do not let this be staggering and stumbling of heart to my master, that you have shed blood without cause, or that my master has saved himself. And when Yahweh has done good to my master, then remember your female servant. And Dawid said to Abigail, Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of Israel, who sent you to meet me today. Blessed is your good taste, and blessed are you, because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed, from avenging myself with my own hand. Nevertheless, as Yahweh Elohim of Israel lives, who has kept me back from doing evil to you, if you had not hurried and come to meet me, not a male would have been left to Nabal by break of day for certain. And Dawid received from her hand what she had brought him and said to her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have listened to your voice and have accepted your face. And Abigail went to Nabal, and see, he was at a feast in the house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was glad within him, and he was exceedingly drunk. So she told him not a word, little or much, until morning light. He's not going to speak to him while he's drunk. And it came to be in the morning, when the wine had gone from Nabal, and his wife had told him these matters, that his heart died within him, and he became like a stone. And it came to be in about ten days that Yahweh smote Nabal, and he died. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. David was fixing to take dude out, when really it's uh, it's Yahweh who gets to take the vengeance on our enemies, who do us evil. And this woman reminded him of that. And Dawid heard that Nabal was dead, and he said, Blessed be Yahweh, who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and has kept his servant from evil. For Yahweh has returned the evil of Nabal on his own head. And Dawid sent, spoke to Abigail to take her as his wife. I had a man I was ready to take out one time.
I forgave my wife and allowed the Lord to handle it. I've since heard that he'd went to prison and he was stabbed multiple times to death. We have to remember that. Doesn't mean we have to let people hurt our families or, or do us wrong. But sometimes seeking a man out to take him out because he's done you wrong. Just let the Lord handle it. <clears throat> Verse 40. And when the servants of David had come to Abigail at Carmel, they spoke to her saying, Dawid sent us to you to ask you to become his wife. And she arose, bowed her face to the earth, and said, Here is your female servant, a servant to wash the feet of the servant of my master. And Abigail hurried and rose and rode on a donkey with five of her female attendants. And she followed the messenger Dawid and became his wife. Dawid had also taken Ahinoam of Israel, and so both of them were his wives. But Shaul had given Michal, his daughter, Dawid's wife, to Palti, son of Leish who was from Gilliam. Hmm. It's not going to be good on Saul for doing that. All right. We'll speak on that another time. Let's get on over to Acts 19. Okay, Acts 19, 1. It came to be while Apollos was at Corinth that Shaul, having passed through the upper parts, came to Ephesus, and having found some taught ones, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, No, we have not even heard. There is a set-apart spirit. And he said to them, Into what, then, were you immersed? And they said, Into Johannes' immersion. And Shaul said to Yohanan, Indeed immersed, said Yohanan indeed immersed with an emergence of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on the one who is coming after him, that is, in Messiah Yeshua. And when they heard this, they were immersed into the name of the Master Yeshua. And when Saul had laid hands on them, the set apart spirit came upon them, and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying, and all the men were about twelve. And having gone to the congregation, he spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the reign of Elohim. But when some were hardened and did not believe, speaking evil of on the way before the crowd, he withdrew from them and separated the top ones, reasoning daily in the school of Toronto's. And this took place for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Master Yeshua both in Yehudim and in Greek. And Elohim worked unusual miracles through the hands of Shaul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from, from his body to the sick, and the disease left them, and the wicked spirits went out of them. But certain roving Yehudi exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Master Yeshua over those who had wicked spirits, saying, We exorcise you by Yeshua, who Shaul proclaims. And there were seven sons of a certain Shkiba, a Yehudi's chief priest, who were doing this. And the wicked spirit answering said, Yeshua I know, Shaul I know, but who are you? That rope. And the man in whom the wicked spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <laughs> this, this evil spirit whips the pants off, dude. Let me tell you, if you weren't prayed up and fasted and, and, and just trusting in the Father, casting out a demon can be quite dangerous for you. Right here is a perfect example. Uh, these damn wicked deceivers on TVN who, who sell these... Um, prayer napkins and, and shit like that mm. 
they get people in trouble. I think the Holy, I think Yahweh, um, Yeshua protects some of the dummies. But these, um, these wicked deceivers that know better. We just read over there where David allowed Yahweh to handle handle it, and he handled it. Be careful for you go praying against evil spirits because I assure you they're there and they're very powerful. Like this dude here. You want to get your pants literally beat off of you? Go for it. Now, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying pray up, fast up. Verse 17. And this became known to all, both the Yehudim and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Master Yeshua was made great. And many who had believed came confessing and declaring their deeds. That's repentance. And many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together, burning them before all. And they reckoned up the value of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. And so the word of the Master was growing mightily and prevailing. Repentance from from those of the dark magic and dark arts um, is, is such a blessing. Now when these matters had been completed, Shaul purposed in the spirit, and when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I've been there, I have to see Rome too. And having sent to Macedonia two of those assisting him, Timotheos and Erastus, he himself remained in Asia for a time. And about that time there came to be a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrios, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Artemis, provided no little business to the craftsmen, who having called them together with the workers of a similar trade, said, Men, you know that our wealth is from this business. And you see and hear that not only at, at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Shaul has persuaded and turned away a large number, saying that they are not mighty ones, which are made with hands. Paul's cutting into their business because he's, he's, he's converting those to Yeshua who once believed in these little figurine statues that these silversmiths were making, and they were making lots of money off of them. And not only is this trade of ours in danger of coming to rejection, but also that the temple of the great female mighty one, Artemis, whom all Asia and the world worshipped, shall be regarded as worthless, and her greatness diminished. And having heard this, they were filled with rage and cried out, saying, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! And the entire city was filled with confusion. And they rushed with one mind into the theater, having seized Gaos and Aristikos, Macedonians, Shaul's fellow travelers, <coughs> and Shaul, intending to go in among the mob, the top ones did not allow him. Paul seeks to go in there and start busting heads, even though he's highly outnumbered, but, it, but, but his buddy's holding back. And some of the officials of Asia, being his friends, sent to him, begging him not to risk himself in the theater. And then others indeed shouted this and others that, for the assembly was confused and most of them did not know why they had come together. And some of the crowd instructed Alexander, the Yehudim, putting him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wished to make his defense to the people. But having recognized that he was a Yehudi, Yehudi, Yehudi we all with one voice cried out for about two hours, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! And the city clerk, having calmed the crowd, said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know the city of the Ephesians is the guardian of the temple of the great female mighty one Artemis, and of that which fell down to Zeus? Therefore these matters are undeniable. You need to be calm and do not act rashly. For you have brought these men here who are neither temple robbers nor speaking evil of your female mighty one. If truly then Demetrios and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are pro councils. Let them accuse one another. And if you have any further complaint, it shall be settled in the regular assembly. For we are in danger of being accused of a riot concerning today, there being no reason which we could give account to. 
give to account for this disorderly gathering. And having said this, he dismissed the assembly. Let there be two or more witnesses and establish the matter. It's kind of like what's going on around the United States right now, just riot after riot after riot, you know, and it's, it, it, it's destroying the country. It's cutting her in half. I don't know what's coming up in the future, but all I do know is if you ain't strong and mighty in the word and strong in the Lord and his, his truths and his promises, and don't confuse promises for possibilities. You might have a hard time. I suggest that you get your spiritual house in order and you get your physical house in order and be prepared not to be able to go to the store. Be prepared to, to bunker in. Become community-minded. Trade amongst one another. I didn't have a whole lot of commentary on that, so that's pretty well just read for itself. So y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. So we'll feel the cycle and I will catch you on the next ride. Remember, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Click on the bell and I will catch you later.